Welcome back guys, we're here again with another exam solution. This time we are at question 9 from the May-June 2014 Mathematics Paper 2. My name is Kevin Small and I'm here from CXC Tutor and I'm here to help you. So let us begin. In this question we are given two functions, gx and fx, and we are asked a series of questions. The first question asks us to state which value of x for which f of x is undefined. So let's have a look at f of x. f of x is 2x plus 7 divided by x plus 1, a rational function, and it asks you when it's undefined, well, you, when you check the denominator and see which value would cause the denominator to become 0. So having a look at this function, I can see that when I plug in x equals minus 1, my denominator would become 0 and we know that is not allowed in mathematics so let's see question 1 all right that's a fairly straightforward question. Moving on to part two. Let's calculate the value of g f of five. So we have a composition of two functions, g f of five. This can be done simply by breaking the question into two steps. The first step would be to work out f of five, and then you plug that answer now into the function g. So, f of 5 is equal to 2 times 5 plus 7 divided by 5 plus 1, which is going to be 17 over 6. All right, simple enough. Now, we're going to plug this now into g. So g, 17 over 6, is equal to 4 times 17 over 6 plus 3. If we do our calculations, that should be 34 over 3 plus I can write 3 as 9 over 3, which would give me in total 43 over 3. That is my answer. Moving on to the last question, we are asked to find the inverse function of f of x. This is usually a challenging question, uh, but it's been broken out into three basic steps. The first step, you rewrite your function in terms of y. So in the original problem, you have f of x equals such and such. But when we're starting to find the inverse, we will write in terms of y. So I'm going to say y is equal to 2x plus 7 over x plus 1. All right. The second step is not that um, intuitive but it's something that you have to memorize and that would be to interchange your domain and range that means interchange your x and y variables so wherever you see y you put x and wherever you see x you will now put y so now i would write x is equal to 2y plus 7 over y plus 1 all right, we're almost there. Next step, the final step is basically to solve for y again. So to do that, I will do some algebra rearranging. That would be this denominator times this. That would be x times y plus 1 is equal to 2y plus 7. xy plus x is equal to 2y plus 7. You bring over all the terms that have y and you send across now the other terms that don't have y in it. 
So now on this side, on the left hand side, we should have xy minus 2y is equal to 7 minus x. And we factorize at this point, we want to take out y. So y would be equal to x minus 2 is equal to 7 minus x. And to make y the subject, divide both sides now by x minus 2. y is equal to 7 minus x divided by x minus 2. And here you have it. This is in fact your inverse function. f to the power of negative 1 x. Alright. So here we have it. A pretty straightforward question. Question 9 has a part B as well. We're not going to cover that today. It involves graph work, but I hope at least part A would help to clear up any misconceptions or any trouble that students may have. And if you enjoyed this video and you found it educational, please feel free to like, share, and follow me on Facebook and YouTube. And thank you for watching. See you next time.